Hi students, welcome to HSC Earth and Environmental Science and Module 5, Earth's Processes. This is video number three and the third in our little series of ideas about the origins of organic molecules. And this time we're going to look at panspermia. So we have uh, in this little series looked at a couple of different ways in which you can investigate the evidence for the origin of organic molecules. We have previously looked at the Uri Miller experiment and also at the deep sea vents, the black and white smokers. Now we want to have a little bit of a look at this idea of meteorite panspermia. So the takeaways are to be able to describe the theory, to discuss the concept of extraterrestrial origin for life, and to evaluate what evidence there may be that supports this idea of panspermia as a theory for the origin of organic molecules. So then what we're going to need to do is to have a look at the theory first of all. And panspermia literally means everywhere seeds. So seeds of life scattered throughout the entire universe. And so that's the, I, I guess, the premise behind the theory of panspermia is that the origin of life wasn't necessarily on Earth. It may have been somewhere else and it's been brought to Earth uh, in some fashion, in some manner, often by a meteorite. So parts of uh, other objects in space that have made their way through uh, our atmosphere and have collided with the Earth at some time in the past and as a result have left um, behind some evidence of some sort of primitive life. So we are kind of focusing on the fact that it, it wouldn't have been some complex life, more likely to be something very simple like single-celled microorganisms. Don't forget what they'd have to do is they'd have to survive the cold and lack of atmosphere of space as they were moving from wherever they were to get to the Earth. Uh, so even if they were in an ideal environment initially, they would have had to be able to survive that journey um, from wherever they were um, to the Earth. And of course, once they're on the Earth, maybe that's where they found ideal um, conditions for them to proliferate. And that's how life has, um, I guess, evolved from there. So can we find any evidence of this idea of panspermia? And I think there's a couple of different um, kind of versions of panspermia. Ballistics, one of the ones that I always like, which kind of suggests that uh, objects that have smashed into uh, places where there already was life have then, um, as a result of the impact, ejected material into space. And that material that's been ejected into space could just as easily have um, some form of life on it. So there's a few different types of um, versions of panspermia for you to have a bit of a look at. But we want to have a look at some specific um, examples or some of the reasons why people support this idea of panspermia. And one of the reasons that they do is because there does seem to be records of very, very uh, early life in the fossil record. Some very short period of time after the Earth formed, there seems to be some evidence of um, some of the important molecules. Or what I mean, where, where we actually draw the line between what first life actually was. And that suggests that maybe it didn't start here. Maybe it arrived here from somewhere else. And what we've seen is just the process of all of this time on Earth changing those um, first molecules, first organisms. There's a little bit of work done on the Murchison meteorite, and that was a meteorite that hit uh, Australia, southeastern part of Australia. And uh, when analysed, and this, this was a meteorite that, that um, collided back in 1969, and then subsequent um, analysis of that meteorite was that it was found to contain a number of organic compounds. Now, organic compounds are hugely diverse, but this particular um, meteorite actually contains some of the nucleobases. Now, the nucleobases are those um, bases, nitrogenous bases that are part of nucleic acids. So um, purines, I think, was a specific type of um, organic molecules that were found uh, associated with the Murchison meteorite. And of course, that's a very, very important replicator molecule. So, or at least it's not a replicator itself, but it's part of that um, key replicator molecule. And one of the key ideas in the evolution of life is that there were replicators. There were um, substances that were able to make copies of themselves and then propagate those copies through uh, into generations. 
There's um, also been some information gathered through the Rosetta uh, spacecraft of the Churyumov Gerasimenko comet that um, happened in about 2014. And it found a large number of organic compounds, um, 16 different types of organic molecules, and that included amino acids. And of course, when we're talking about important organic molecules, the nucleic acids and the proteins are two of the keys. The proteins are involved even just in that, that basic structural um, building of a barrier around what would become cells. So we call that now the cell membrane. That cell membrane contains proteins, and those proteins allow not only um, rigidity and structure, but also channels for allowing material to go in and out of the cell. So proteins are very important complex organic molecules, but so are nucleic acids, because nucleic acids have been involved in both the making of proteins and also um, that replication, that, that being able to make copies of themselves. So being able to find evidence of either or both of these two types of complex molecules, or at least their building blocks and amino acids are protein building blocks, and the nucleobases are nucleic acid building blocks. So the fact that we've found some of these on um, with extraterrestrial origins suggests that maybe there is life beyond um, planet Earth. But suggesting that there might be life in the universe and, and then carrying that forward to say, well, that's, that's how life began on our planet is a little bit more of a stretch. And it requires a lot more evidence if we're going to make claims like that. A little while ago, a uh, meteorite, which we think came off of uh, Mars, due to perhaps one of those ballistic impacts, an impact that sort of threw material off into space, um, was found in Antarctica in 1984. And of course, um, this created um, some, some really uh, interesting research because it meant we knew we had something of extraterrestrial origin, even if it was from one of our closest planets, um, to then look and see what sort of things we can find. And one of the things that was reported in 1996 as being found was the remains of a nanobacteria, very, very small type of bacterium. So some primitive form of life. Now, obviously, this created a great furor at the time and a lot of support um, for the whole idea of panspermia. That movement gained a little bit of momentum at that time. But most experts now tend to think that that may not have been exactly um, the case. So perhaps there were more, it was more about organic molecules that, that were part of just a general chemical reaction, not specifically driven one by a form of life. And perhaps there may even been some contamination with the um, Antarctic ice that may be able to explain the presence of these organisms. So this is a complex area. The whole idea of panspermia is basically that life is everywhere, um, primitive life or some form of life, uh, and that occasionally through events like um, meteorite impact, some of those um, extraterrestrial organisms are being brought uh, here onto planet Earth for us to, to have a look at. And this is where studies like the comet were important because obviously they haven't contacted the Earth. If we can go out and we can make our measurements and maybe, again, uh, avoid any levels of contamination, we may be able to find some sort of an extraterrestrial life force. And of course, that's one of the um, great goals of uh, some of the research money that goes into um, space exploration. That's three different types of ideas about the origin of organic molecules. And we'll have a look at each of those in a little bit more detail to see what sort of evidence we can uh, uh, find to support each one. And also, which one of those you lean towards. Thanks for watching.